bank runs when the food runs out. Hey gang, this is Mike with MrNoFluff.com. And did you know the biggest corporations that made all the money before the crisis, before the meltdown, are the same exact big corporations that are making all the money while everyone else is shut down? Have you thought about that? For example, the bankers, right? Every lot of stores are closed down, but the bankers are still open and they're coming up with new programs to indebt us, right? And get paid a lot of money just to be the middleman. Like the program they just came out with the bailout of Save Your Paychecks or whatever they call it, right? Which is ridiculous. Because these guys are just playing the middleman. The bankers are just playing the middleman. They have no skin in the game. They don't have any of their own money they're fronting. They are getting the money from the taxpayer, which is us, given to to the treasury. They're getting the money from us. They're going to lend it out to us on an extreme crazy interest rate when we have ultra low interest rate today. And then they don't even have to hold on to the note. They're going to sell it back to the Fed. So it's kind of like the 2006 fourth quarter crash. It's kind of like mortgage-backed securities where the bankers are getting insured. They make all the money from loan generation to servicing, etc. And then quickly sell the note on the Wall Street to millions of investors around the world, which caused the last meltdown. And at the same time, they have the they foreclose, they get the property, and they, they get to triple and double dip left and right. So again, let's go back to what I said. Isn't it crazy that the most successful, biggest corporations in America are the only ones that are able to make massive profits now? Like the Amazons, like the stinky bankers, now, you know, isn't it also crazy that the bankers have relieved themselves of regulations to have any kind of reserve? I just brought it to you guys just a few <clears throat> few videos back <clears throat> that I said that the bankers used to have a 10% reserve for every person that deposited money into their account. Now that has been diminished, not diminished, what's the word? It has been eliminated, it's been erased. Right, so banks are not by mandate or by policy or by the laws or regulation required to have any more the security or deposit or you know reserves. Isn't that crazy? And isn't that crazy that bankers have laws that are made in their favor that if the bank profits, they keep all the money, but if the bank fails, then there's bailouts and bail ins because if you guys don't know where it was called unsecure creditor when we put our money into a bank now if the bank fails they can bail in take our money isn't it funny that the whole world is in so much debt and we have an economic class and all of a sudden we have this bug and no one can get together anymore and can't have marches on the banks or runs on the banks in reality, bank runs have already happened, but they can't happen because a lot of banks all over the state are closing. They only allow you to take money from the ATM, which means you can't take all your money out. They're closing their locations or they're just doing online or they're even suspending processes. So it's, it's impossible for people to do a bank run because they're all closed down. I can't say all, but many. And if you want to take a large amount of money back in 2016, they wouldn't give it to you. You had to order it. And I can imagine today. Isn't it also funny that the bankers, FDIC is coming out and says, hey, don't take your money out. Your, your money is safe with us. But they, the lady forgot to mention that they, they don't even have 10% of the money in their banking account to cover just one or two banks failing. Because one bank has so much derivatives that covers more money in the whole world. And I brought it to you guys on my YouTube channel that 
the derivatives are so much more than all gold, all Bitcoin, all <clears throat> top companies in the world, all governments. So the, how can the FDIC cover Wells Fargo going down or Bank of America going down? They can't. Then if, if they could, then why did they put laws in that says, look, when the bank goes fails, when the bank goes bankrupt, we're the last people to get any of our money. It's our money. So why is that? Well, think about it. The laws are not written for the working class. The laws are made for the very elite, very rich, which is basically what's happening with this program that they rolled out for small businesses is the banks are just being intermediately getting a, just touching the money, creating a lot of fees, making a lot of money. They're not even responsible for it. It's not even their money. And at the same time, they're going to charge me top interest. And more importantly, they're going to get everyone into debt, which is what they want. I mean, in America, ladies and gentlemen, is, is a very, very powerful country. And we used to be the most powerful country ever, not only in, in our military, but in our production and our gold st sittings, right? But today we have a nation of debtors from GM to Ford to the biggest corporations to the states to the feds to the local people. So we can't have prosperity. We can't have abundance when everyone is in debt. So for us to have prosperity, we have to go back to the old days where we became the world reserve currency because we had all the gold because we're the massive producer of shit. Today is total opposite. It's the inverse. We're the, the most consumer of shit. We don't hardly produce anything. All of our factories are outsourced in India, China, Mexico, you name it, Taiwan. And on top of that, everyone is in debt. Everyone, right? If, you know, <clears throat> my thing is that there's so many people that have a business that, sh that shouldn't have a business because they don't... They didn't have the money. They didn't invest it correctly. They didn't take enough risk correctly. They didn't save, you know, their money. I mean, how can your business be closed for one week, two weeks, one month, two months, and you'd be out of money? Why Why were you not stacking your money? Not, I'm not talking about you in general. Why wasn't that business owner stacking his money for a rainy day? Why was? Why were they taking the profits and maybe growing or, or maybe buying more nicer shit nicer house nicer cars ipad iphones versus putting it aside for a rainy day right um or you know so we have a nation and of entrepreneurs what i call debt pioneers that don't understand how to start a business with a 100 bucks like what i teach you guys on my channel with the new flip right on the new flip is something that i created that i apply every freaking day myself because I can invest a hundred bucks and quickly be able to turn it into 200 to 700 percent. Sometimes in four days, sometimes in just 29 minutes. Okay. And this business is very, very lucrative, very, very profitable, very, very simple. And someone can make 10 grand a month from this. Someone can make 100 grand a month from it. Depends on the level of commitment. Someone could just do it for to make three grand a month from it easily, just part time, part time. Part time, just a few hours. So, you know, and we all have to learn how to, you know, be entrepreneurs to, to our creativity and imagination. We all have to be entrepreneurs to sacrifice. We can't be entrepreneurs by borrowing money from a bank. That's not entrepreneurship. That's slavery. Entrepreneurship is is to create what's inside your heart, what's your calling, and bring and materialize it into the world. Entrepreneurship is not putting on your credit card. Entrepreneurship is not asking a bank for permission to do your dream. Entrepreneurship is not asking anyone to do your dream. You just do it. There's no prerequisite. That's why I say start where you stand. Start where you stand, my friend. Start where you stand. Because to be your dream is the most important thing because that puts you into flow. That puts you into harmony. And when you're in flow, you want to become more and you want to give more because you really do what you'd love to do. And time flies by so fast, but it seems like it's very, very slow. Right. So the most important thing is not to be 
indebted to these bankers. The most important thing is not to be indebted to these bankers. Right? So these new programs that they're coming out with, they're just trying to enslave a bunch of people. Even the guys that own their business free and clear, they think, oh, man, I can get this easy money. And boom, they want to get you. They want to get you. Right? So we have to realize is what do we want in life? You want just accumulation, accumulation, bunch of neat, bunch of this, bunch of that, bunch of that. What is that going to take us? Or, or do we want freedom? Do we want to just follow our hearts? Right? I can't answer that for you, and I'm not going to judge you if you want X or Y. Right? But America is a great country, and I want it to be a great country. I don't want us to be, you know, guess what? The debtors of, of the world. Right? And because of Big Brother, massive wars, because of corporations, you know, capitalism, like the way we have, which is not true capitalism, if we're going to have capitalism. This is like, I got my friends and they go above and beyond the law, but everyone else can do whatever they want. I have to follow the law, you know, because that's what we did in 2006, fourth quarter, when we bailed out all the stinky bankers. This is exactly what we did in 2019 where we're giving all the bankers money in the repo market so what is you know that's not a fair thing and it's not a fair thing that we're going to take the taxpayers money pay to give it to the bankers for them to lend it to us again and then they make all these points loan generation all these fees they may charge right plus interest and then they're going to sell this note to the fed that the, the bankers don't have to bring their own money it's not their own collateral nothing but just the touching it, they're just a mental man, you know. Think about it. They're already making so much money. They already got the biggest buildings. They already own the whole world almost. Why should they get a bailout? Um, and so that's that. Now let's get into the f when the food runs out because believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we have tariffs. We we what we don't realize is we're we're like a little snob, right? We don't produce shit. The country that produces our shit, we're, we're punching them in the face with tariffs. That doesn't even make any sense, right? Because we don't got the factories here to produce the shit, right? We, we, we eliminated that because the big corporations wanted profit over people. They wanted profit over community. They wanted profit over having a good product. So they, they, they try to make massive, nine, if, they were, if the profit margin was 10% before, now back in the days when American was great, now they want to get 90% profits. And that's why we're in the trouble that we are, because we outsource that stuff up, right? And so the problem is we are having tariffs with a bunch of countries that produce our shit, which is very, very not good for us, Okay. Second part is with, you know, what people don't realize is the food that we get in America, like people that plant the plant these foods that we eat, your bananas, your all the stuff, your, your, your you know, your dates, your all the stuff, your oranges. Well, it's usually Hispanic people working that shit, man. Right. And at one direction, we're having tough regulation on immigrants that really are producing our fucking food. On the other end, we're having tariffs. On the other hand, we have 14 million people unemployed. They don't have jobs. 14, 10 million, 9 million. Who knows what the true number is? Because earlier they said it 3 million. Right? And I told you guys it was going to be 69 million people minimum. Right? And so, you know, we are going to have food shortages. We already see it. Every time I go to Costco, every time I go to Whole Foods, there's less and less food. Right? Forget about getting masks. You can't find no masks. Forget about getting eggs. You can't find no eggs. You know, it doesn't matter if, you, if, if you're a family of one or if you're a family of ten. You can only get one egg if you're lucky to find it. This is America in 2020. There's lines. You know, the other day I had to go get the yogurt. It was like... I have to wait there for 45 minutes in line just to get in. So, you know, and it's not funny that, you know, that food shortages are going to come more than we realize because, you know, the people that pick our food, we're, 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 we're beating them up and trying to put them in jail and deport them. Right. But but the average man in America don't want to go work that hard to make seven bucks an hour. Right. And then the other thing is we got the tariffs going on. 
pissing off people, calling names just because they don't look like us. They don't have the same gods or whatever we believe in. They, 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 ha they have different foods than we do. Instead of appreciating people and like chasing their foods and being more compassionate and understanding, you know, we, we, the people that are making our shit, our shoes, our shirt, our cars, everything, man. Right? And at the same time, at the same time, people don't have jobs and there's massive companies are closing down, massive amount of people are closing down and that's going to cause massive price hikes on food. And, you know, the people with means, the multi corporations, they're going to be able to provide, but there's going to be riots on the street. Right? I mean, people can't even get their unemployment checks. There's, the people are waiting for their $1,200 checks or whatever. I mean, like, <clears throat> we're now going into, I think, almost the fourth week of quarantine, anywhere from two to four weeks. I, I don't really keep track of it that much, but it seems like anywhere from two to four weeks, somewhere around there. And, you know, people, the, the bankers know, man, that people can only afford to, not to pay for their food for four weeks. They already done statistics. They all they know all the facts. So they're just kind of going up to everyone can get into debt. Even if you're not in debt, now you, you need to get into debt. So th there's also going to be problems with, you know, the distributions. Right? People are going to get sick. People want more more money. And the, corp the corporations are very greedy. They, they don't want to pay more. You'll see strikes happening in Amazon. You're going to see strikes at the distribution centers. So... You know, the, 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 the powers to be, the big corporations, they're making the most money and, and the guys doing all the freaking work, taking all the risk, not making nut peanuts. So this is why it can lead into food shortages. But this is not a doom and gloom. This is a wake up call to realize we can't trust bankers that if we want to make America great, like the president says, we got to start making shit inside of our own country. Right. And we need to to cut the freaking bankers because they they pollute, they deflate, they they water down our money, they increase our cost of living. And big brother, the the more they, they, they buy police cars and the more guns they buy and you know, the less we get for them to beat us on top of our heads. So, you know, we have to realize that, hey, we have to change with ourselves inside. We got to stop being consumers and we got to be the producers. We got to have, you know, something stack away and then learning to invest that we got to learn not to work for the man. That's why I do what I do for my channel. That's why I got the new flip because so many people think it's so hard to start a business. And guys, I put my heart into this, I put this on my kids and my, my mom and everyone. I sit in my car and I sat there for hours and I wrote this thing up. Because it'll work, because I use it myself, the new flip. Okay? I show you how to start a business with a hundred dollars without credit, without debt, without a banker, without any of that stuff, without hardly any tools, without a website, without a business card, without anything using the newest technology, just the comfort of your home and make fast money, or you have the potential to lose your hundred bucks. But if you want to be your dreams, you have to learn that you if you take risks, you're going to lose sometimes. It's better to lose a hundred bucks versus a hundred thousand dollars. But I haven't met any of my students that lose a hundred bucks. Neither have I ever lose. I've only made 200 to 700% returns sometimes in 29 minutes, sometimes in four days and everything in between. And it works. It doesn't matter if you're in California, if you're in Oklahoma, you're in Texas, you're in Denver, you're in uh, you, you know, UK, Great Britain, if you're in Canada, it doesn't matter. I have students everywhere and they've done it. All you got to do is just take action and believe in yourself. And that's what the new flip does because it programs you. Because w we've been in a society where, you know, we're, we're an F or we're a C or we're a B. We're, we've been in a society where, you know, advertisement says we're too short, we're too, too tall, we're too skinny, we're too fat. We don't have a nice cool clothes. We don't have this. We don't have this. So that's why it's, 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 it breaks our ego. It breaks our, our belief in system. That's why the new flip is so simple. That's why I call it a game. You got to look at it as a business game for entrepreneurs where you can make money today, 
today. You don't have to wait and study for weeks or months. Today, you finish this freaking course. It's very, very simple. I give you the book. I give you the video training. I, I give you the manuals, exactly what to say, how to say it, what, what to buy, when to buy it, everything. You just got to do. And once you turn your 100 bucks into 500 bucks, then, then you're going to be hooked. Just like my other students. But the hardest part is to take the action to turn the 100 bucks to 500 because once you do it, you're going to be hooked and then you can make thousands, whatever you want. Just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. That could be a full-time gig, full-time business, full-time business where you're making 100,000 a month. Or it can be something you make as a side hustle. You make two grand, five grand, seven grand, depends on how much you want to put in. There's a very, very small amount of work required. No special skills needed besides what, what I'm going to give you in my course. So ladies and gentlemen, there's great opportunity in this because there's massive job losses. There's massive chaos. And in chaos, there's opportunity. And one of the greatest opportunities that I have for you right now in the class is the, the, the new flip where I show you how to start your own business or a side hustle or, or extra income. Even if you're stuck at home with just a hundred bucks, copy and paste job right through your computer. Anyone can do it. I'm going to let my kid do it when, when she becomes five, seven years old. Right? When she realizes she wants some money, well, let's do the new flip. I do it every freaking day. I just did it just yesterday, guys. I invested um, $125, and I made $375 in 29 minutes. I mean, it just blew me away. Even my wife, even my mom and dad, I, you know, I told them, like, man, you know? Like real fast, and I've been doing it. I, I I've done deals where I put twenty bucks in, made two hundred and fifty dollars. I've I've done deals where I put a hundred bucks in, I made seven hundred bucks, actually six ninety seven. Right, so it works. So if you're at home, you're quarantined. If you don't have a job right now, or if you have a great job and you're just looking for side income, or if you hate your job, you want to work for yourself. Instead of doing something really, really big, if you if you never had if you never had your own business before, instead of flipping houses, instead of doing all this crazy stuff where you have to borrow all this money, do something like the new flip. Put ten, twenty, fifty, hundred, whatever your goal is, into the bank for yourself, or in the, don't put it in the bank. Well, I can't tell you what to do. It's not financial advice, but I wouldn't trust the banks. I don't trust the banks, right? But make the profit. Then, then, instead of using banks' money, you can use your own money you created through the new flip. That's how I've done it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Click the like button. Share this message. Don't take no for answer.